Today, we're going to talk to a shark diving recording artist about her love for the most feared of animals, and stick around for the shark bite when we find out that some sharks have teeth in their eyes. G'day everyone, welcome to Shark Week, the podcast. I'm your host, Luke Tipple, and today I'm super excited to bring on a shark diving superstar, Kesha. Now, you wouldn't think shark diving and pop superstar goes together until you meet her. Now, before we get too deep into things, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and ring that little bell so you never miss another one of our weekly podcasts. You know, it's easy to forget about nature. I think a lot of us live in the suburbs, we live in air-conditioned boxes, and we're so far away from the ocean and sharks that sometimes it can feel unimportant. Now, if there's anything I want you to get from this podcast, it is just how important the ocean is and how important sharks are to our daily lives, even if we don't see the ocean with our eyes every day. Now, one of the things I love to do is hear from people with massive voices about their love for sharks and the outdoors, which is why I invited Kesha onto the Shark Week podcast. Now, Kesha... Hi. I've been chatting to your brother and he told me you're a badass shark diver. You know what? I am. I haven't been in like a year, but I have done plenty of shark diving around the world. But he was telling me that. I'm like, no way. Uh, And if that's the case, we have to have her on the podcast. Let's talk sharks. Let's talk sharks. I mean, it's a very little known fact, I think. People just kind of think of me and think of partying at um, a late night club or something. But I actually do what I do. And that's my passion. But my other equal passion is spending time in the wild with animals, like in their own habitat, obviously, completely in the wild. I don't I feel like some people might think I'm coming from left field, like being on this podcast even, but I'm so passionate about it. So I just want to share. Yeah, I I don't think it's left field at all. I, I think it's awesome that anybody has any interest in the ocean, especially when they have a voice, you know, like yours, you know, metaphorically and physically. You know, being able to come on and, and speak your mind on on conservation matters that impact the rest of the world. I mean, what higher calling is there than that? I mean, for me, that there is none. Like, I've gone swimming with humpback whales in Tonga many times, diving with hammerheads in the Galapagos, diving with tiger sharks. I went cage diving with great whites. So this is like a love of mine is are the sea creatures. Yeah, that's really cool. You've actually got a couple of bucket list things there that I've yet to do. Galapagos has been like one of the things I've always wanted to get down and and get to. You have to be a really good diver to do it. How was your experience with the hammerheads? It was amazing. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like the most amazing diver, but I do have like a deep dive certification. One of the things I wanted to do when I was like 17, 18 is I wanted to do music, but if that didn't work out, I wanted to be a dive instructor. Okay. So I've gone diving in caves. Uh, my favorite, like I love a shipwreck dive. I got certified in Honduras, but the Galapagos was definitely one of the most extraordinary experiences I've ever had. You go really deep and there were about 40 to 50 hammerheads. Just they were circling this rock in the middle of the ocean. So you just kind of, you would go down and hang and they would just come by about every 15 minutes. And it was so extraordinary. It was so beautiful. It was like watching angels swim. I love that. Watching angels swim, That's that should be a song of yours, I think, especially about hammerheads. We're going to put on Shark one. Week. It'll be awesome. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what what did you go to Honduras for? Yeah, that's where I got certified, but my brother was in the Peace Corps. So okay. I went down there to visit him. And then while we were there... That's when the diving obsession started. I was, right. I was about uh, 16, 17 years old. Yeah, my uh, my first job out of college was in Utila in Honduras. Oh my God, I, that's where I got certified. I thought you might have, yeah. So the deal was I had to have a marine biology degree and I was just finishing, just like in my finals as I saw this on the, the Paddy Pros website. You had to be a dive instructor, which I was. And the deal was I got to tag whale sharks for six months of the year, but I had to support myself for the other six months of the year by teaching diving. So I was like, hey, perfect job for me. So I literally got that job before I'd even been to my graduation ceremony, which I never went to. And I have a recurring nightmare that I'm a fraud because I never graduated. But I did get to go and all I did was dive and tag sharks. It was the coolest experience ever. Oh my God, what a dream. Did you see whale sharks down there? 
Uh, I did not see a whale shark in Otila, but in Mexico, there's a place called La Paz where you can swim with whale sharks. And I definitely had one of my favorite experiences under the water with a whale shark because you're snorkeling, not diving. But one I thought was like really taking a liking to me. He swam right up to me and, you know, I know the rules you don't touch, but he decided to bitch slap me. And I have it on camera, <laughs> me getting bitch slapped by a whale shark. With with the tail, you mean? His, like, fin. I think, yeah. I don't know. He didn't like my vibe, I guess. But <laughs> those, I don't think people realize just how massive those animals are. Like, that's probably one of my favorite animals on the planet is a whale shark. Like, I've spent so much time with great whites and stuff, and people always expect me to say some big predatory animal. But the whale sharks are just so cool. But they don't realize that their tail is so massive and it can just smack you like it feels like a whole hand slap across your body oh for sure i got like i always call it the time the whale shark bitch slapped me i fully feel like i got (laughs) bitch slapped by the whale shark they are massive and one of my favorite things about spending time with whales and sharks is that actually really gentle experience it's really beautiful it's kind of where i find my spirituality is when i'm diving and swimming with them because you're in their home and we're just visitors and I feel very honored that they decide to grace me with their presence because they have the whole ocean. So I find it really beautiful when you get to interact with one of these animals. It's such a special moment. It really is. Uh, it's awesome to hear you say that. Like, I, I make it a point to get into the ocean as much as I can. And just last week, I, I think I was stressed out about work or something. I don't know what was going on. But I, was just, I just thought, I have to get out. So I went out diving. And as soon as I go under the water, it all disappears. Suddenly totally. you're in a whole different environment. You're, everything's calm and peaceful. And you're concentrating on your breathing. And found a cool wreck. Did some deep dive. Got I'm narked. Sick. It was a great time. Saw a little you shark. You got narked? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, you get a little bit deep and you get a little bit of narcosis. It's oh, fun. my gosh. <clears throat> I've like, knock on wood. <laughs> I've never gotten that. I think that would freak me out. But that's that's like a beautiful way to feel really present to diving. I feel like you have to be so present and you just hear your breathing. There's a meditative quality about diving to me. Oh, there totally is. You know, you know what I really love about it is uh, especially with deep diving, um, like tech diving or just sort of recreational deep diving, but there's a whole planning thing. So you've, you've got this mission You've got the mission to make sure that you dive safely, that you've got enough air, that you know, you're going to go to the right place. You're managing all the logistics of current and animals and everything. But when you hit the water, suddenly it's, it's game time, but it's such a peaceful game. And you're, you're there on your own, but you also feel connected with the ocean. It's, it's this experience that I've had ever since. I remember going to the ocean when I was like five. I think my dad taught me spearfishing. It was about then, five or six. Oh, wow. I started snorkeling, spearfishing. And ever since then, I was just absolutely hooked. Me too. Are you a water sign? When's your birthday? Uh, I don't know. I'm a Virgo. Oh, you're a Virgo. What's that? Yeah. I actually don't know either. No, I think you're not a water sign. That's interesting. I'm a triple Pisces, which is March. But triple Pisces, super water, super emotional, super creative. But like, I have to be by the water. Whenever I go into the water, it makes me feel really like baptized, born again, really cleansed energetically. It feels like it's a magic trick. Yeah. What is it that attracts you to sharks? Sharks, I feel like, are very misunderstood. I feel like I relate to sharks where people, like, they have a bad reputation in a lot of ways, but they are actually just existing and are incredibly beautiful. And as long as you're not infringing on their life, generally speaking they don't try to attack anybody else and i just i don't know i've had this feeling when i first came out that everyone thought i was this wild party animal which you know i had my moments but i just really related to the sharks when i went cage diving in south africa i just thought hmm these guys just have a really interesting reputation and now that i'm spending time with them i feel like it's sensationalized because that's what people do. We live for the drama of everything. Mm-hmm. But they're just beautiful creatures existing. Um, I just became kind of like 
I got so impassioned by spending time with them that it then became like tour, go diving with shark, tour, go diving with shark. So my one passion kind of fueled my addiction for sharks and ocean, spending time in the ocean. You know what I think it is? It's that people, you know, you might appreciate this kind of analogy that people see sharks just on the surface. You know, they, they see a fin coming. They don't know what's underneath it. There's that inherent fear of what's underneath. You know, or they see the the shark interacting usually negatively. You know, if you're going to see uh-huh. it on TV, it's going to be something negative, right? So you see a, a negative human interaction where a shark is on the surface and, you know, they might have bitten that person or something. And that's pretty much all we see. The, the big mystery to people is what's underneath. You know, what happens in the deep water? What happens to how do these animals live? And uh-huh. when people are... Are brave enough or curious enough to get out there and, and explore the ocean, to be underwater, to look them eye to eye, to be one in that environment, suddenly those mysteries don't necessarily go away, but you realize there's just way more than to sharks than there is of what we see on the surface. Totally. I feel like it's all sensationalized yeah. because this sensationalism sells whatever news organization is putting it out, you know? And we have a culture that's based on making money off of drama. And I think that that's why I want to go diving with them too. I feel like I'm going to the moon, but it's right here. And there's so much of the ocean we haven't explored. After I spent time in the Gal- Galapagos, I kind of learned more about shark finning. And there's just such a such a need for people to know that they're not monsters and mm. that you can appreciate them. and should be protected because they're really important to the ecosystem. Yeah. Tell me about your work. I know you've done work with the Humane Society. I think we've got that in common. Um, I worked yeah. for them a number of years oh. ago and you were one of their ambassadors, right? I am. It's like one of the most proud things in my entire career that they thought what I was doing was worthy enough to make me an ambassador, which is huge. But I've spent a lot of time just traveling, obviously, from my job, but also keeping the Humane Society in the loop if I see something that kind of isn't going right in the area or something, some, like I was in Dubai and there was a ton of boxes full of kittens. So I was playing a show there and then I would call them and be like, just so you know, if you have anybody in the area, this is the street. When I was in Tonga swimming with humpbacks, I saw some dogs that were getting abused, so it's just kind of everywhere I go. I try to mm. help the animals too because they help me so much. Is there a um, some type of actionable response they're able to do, or is it just something that where they're able to say, "Hey, yeah, we need to campaign a little more in that area"? Well, I just have done a bunch of different things, spreading awareness. I think to mm. my fans because, again, I think I think my Real, the real ones know that I'm obsessed with animals, but I think, you know, to a lot of people, they don't know that this is my other passion. So raising money, going to events, and just trying to be as aware, of pos- as aware as possible when I'm traveling and going to do these different animal excursions to make sure they're humane. Like, I did have ages ago, it was like 15 years ago, But there was an elephant in one of my music videos, and they were the ones that reached out and said, hey, like, we understand that's exciting, but you shouldn't ride elephants and use them in videos. And it's one of the experiences I learned so much from from making that mistake. Mm. And I wanted to help spread awareness so other people that may just not know any better, like, I really didn't. And ever since then, that actually started our relationship, me and the Humane Society. So I'm grateful that they reached out and could help me course correct yeah i can really respect that because i think especially with someone in your position you get given so many opportunities to do things and you know just the naivety of not being in that scenario or being in contact with that animal or knowing the you know the circumstances where somebody might just be putting you in a situation say hey this is great like where is that check and balance to be able to understand until somebody lets you know and um Yeah, but then to be able to take that and say, hey, I'm going to make this a passion of mine to make sure other people also understand. That's pretty awesome, mate. Absolutely. I really really appreciate that. Yeah, of course. And even just I try to help them with animal testing on cosmetics because obviously I like live in the world of lots of cosmetics. And (laughs) I've done 
like a campaign with them so people are aware of which brands don't test on animals and I did a cosmetic line and I made sure obviously that I didn't test on animals and just kind of supporting people living an aware life that also doesn't harm animals. Something like swimming with dolphins in the wild is so drastically different than swimming with them in captivity. And I just think, you know, like that's why I used my experience from the elephant because I really didn't I should have thought a little harder about it, but I I didn't. And so just giving people the options of how to do it in a humane way so the animals can feel happy, safe, and free and protected. What's on your bucket list for travel? I mean, you've probably been almost everywhere, but the ocean's a big place. So where where do you want to go? I'd love to go see some sperm whales. I think near Sri Lanka, um, there's a jellyfish lake in Palau that I've been dying to go to. It looks so beautiful. And I really, I have like whales tattooed all over my body. Like I'm a psychopath. But I really want to go, like you can kayak and look for narwhals. And that's my bucket bucket list. It sounds so That'd be freezing badass. and s- s- insane. But I really would like to see a narwhal in the wild before I die. That's one of my dream excursions. So that'd be like in between the ice flows, kayaking around, waiting for yeah. this big unicorn, prehistoric looking animal to come up and rear this. Like those things are the craziest looking animals. Are they I've ever seen. so I have like a giant tattoo of a normal on my forearm, <laughs> which I've just been obsessed with them since I was a little kid. And I think they're so magical. There's something really magical about animals especially in the wild when you just see them living their life. I feel like you get blessed. And so I just would be so grateful and so humble to be able to see these magical unicorn whales. Yeah. My daughter calls them uh, unicorns of the ocean. She's kind of obsessed with them too. Oh, so weird that comment. (laughs) (laughs) So what are you... You know, you work with the Humane Society and everything else. Uh, obviously, there's a need for shark conservation, preservation. Um, I'm sure you've traveled to many places where that's not really the first thought of the people living there. How does that make you feel? I think that it's, you know, a lot of people and culture, I think you get you get used to something in a culture, and I don't blame any person, but I think it's about education of how we can course correct a little bit. And watching The Co, that documentary, I loved seeing that because Mm. it's giving people that have been doing something for so long another option because people just want to live their lives, make money for their family, and I understand that. But I feel like people want to do better. We want to be good. We, I think we can collectively as people say we want our children to be able to see white rhinos in the wild. We want our children to be able to see a hammerhead. We don't want them to go extinct. Yeah. You you mentioned The Cove. Was that uh, an important film for you? It was very much because I was totally unaware of what was going on. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. I mean, at least for me, you learn when you learn things, right? You don't just know them, especially if you grow up in a culture that doesn't talk about it or find it a problem. Yeah. Well, we're certainly all working towards that. I mean, we're just talking about it the other day. It's a really difficult thing to to tackle but i think you're right it comes down to the culture of some of these countries who are demanding the products from these animals that needs to be changed and that's that's where people like you come in who you know are able to touch the the hearts of many other cultures and say hey you know also i'm making cool music and also could you maybe listen to me and and (laughs) challenge what you've been brought up to think about sharks because we kind of need them we do need them and i feel like, you know, I have my tiny little corner of the world, but I want to do what I can because I've had personal experience with these animals and it's such a beautiful, majestic, life-changing experience. And I hope that for my kids one day and their kids. So I think it's, it's also about the education of what the, the products that come from shark finning, how they're really not scientifically proven to do a lot of the things that people say they do. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't so, do any of it. <laughs> no. It's eating toenails. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, with tigers too, like that's one of my bucket list things is to go to India and camp with the wild tigers. 
But I think that if people experience these animals and in their majesty, and it's so spiritual to me when I spend time with these animals, then you're more inclined to want to protect them and learn more about them. No. Well, you mentioned your, you know, little corner of the world, which isn't all that little, really. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but, you know, like there's billions of people on this planet. Well, you know, a good portion of my hearing your music. Um, you just put out a new album, right? I did. I did like one month ago about. So what's that experience like? Is it crazy so far? Oh, it, it was the most intense album I've ever made. It's called Gag Order, and I did it with Rick Rubin. I don't know if you know who that is, but yeah. he's someone I've looked up to for my entire life. He's one of the greatest living music producers and maybe just one of the greatest music producers of all time. He's iconic. And to be able to work with someone who, to me, I respect so much and him wanting to work with me also was really mind-blowing. And it's just been a series of pretty magnificent spiritual experiences, both musically and energetically with Rick. And even for my birthday, like two months ago, I went and I was kayaking with orcas in the wild outside of... um like off the coast of Washington. So those really are my two things. One fuels the other. The nature gives me the energy to make the music and the music funds my experiences in nature. Yeah, so this is legit. Like you're you're literally out there all the time in nature, in the wild, interacting with different animals. Oh God, yeah. That's like what I live for. It's my favorite thing in the world. Aside from playing shows, my favorite yeah. thing in the world is spending time with animals. What's that feeling like when you're on a massive stage in front of people? Like the energy off of that compared to a great white shark coming towards you? You know what's weird? I'm actually just realizing this as we're talking, but it's not that different of a feeling when you're in the ocean and you like go underwater and you see some beautiful animal that decides to grace you with their gorgeous presence. And being on stage is like you're in this big space and you're with your fans. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the adrenaline, but there's something similar about yeah. both experiences that is something I crave desperately in my heart. I wonder if it's... like People talk to me and they say, oh, you're an adrenaline junkie because, you know shark diving, a bunch of other stuff that, that I get into, but I, I've never thought of it that way. I've always thought of it as like just an intense focus. It, it doesn't yeah. feel like I'm trying to like drink 20 cans of energy drink and go, Rah! like I'm not. It's like, it's actually when I'm peaceful and not like screaming and yelling and stuff that I feel the most focused. And yeah, it might be doing something that if I mess up, it costs me my life. But absolutely, that, and- that, that's the fuel, you know? I, it must be some like a tiny bit of what you feel on stage. Oh, it feels really like special. It feels important. It feels like cosmic divine timing has to line up for this particular thing to occur. And I think that it's okay to be an adrenaline junkie. For me, I find exactly what you just said. For me to be the most present, I think it takes a lot of stimulus for me for whatever reason. Mm. Like I thrive in slightly chaotic environments i think because of my job but you have you are forced into being present both on stage and when you're diving with great whites like you have to be so present and i think that that's a beautiful experience that's why i think it's meditative in a way because you can't yeah. get more present than being underwater with a tiger shark oh yeah <laughs> you really can't and and if you you know space off then that can cost you dearly so. absolutely yeah uh, what do you hope that this album does for you other than just make people um, enjoy the music? Interesting. I I made it from this deep place of needing to get this experience out of my system. I had this like really beautiful spiritual kind of awakening moment and I wanted to make an album that sounded like that felt because I hadn't heard something that sounded the way that felt for me. So I went on this three-year-long journey of trying to find the perfect flow of exactly what it felt like. So it was mine for three years, and now I've given it away. And so I just hope people 
listen to it and they know that they're not alone if they've experienced these like weird almost psychedelic feelings and mm. you know i speak about my insecurity i speak about like who i once was and will i ever get her back and heartbreak and how it would i just want to be happy and if other people have these feelings i just want them to know they're not alone and i think that there's a lot of comfort in knowing you're not alone as a human as one of one of the billions of people i think it's nice to know you're not alone in your kind of like darker scarier thought yeah is that normal for someone to take three years to sort of contemplate and ponder and and put out an album it seems like oh God, we live in I just such know. a fast food world of music but no i think it's actually great like that you could spend that amount of time and thought to to put something out that uh, that evokes those years of of contemplation well i really wanted to capture it like a book like a chapter of my life yeah. i want to capture that musically and i think i really did and it was a scary time for like the whole world. We're all going through this collective pandemic. So I really like took my time with it, which I will have to give Rick Rubin props because he kept telling me to be patient and I'm not a patient human being. But it was nice to actually listen back to it when it was finished and think that's exactly what I wanted it to be. So you can be proud in what I can be proud in what I made. That's a good yeah. feeling. Well, I can tell you one thing. If you think of yourself as not being patient, then that must be a, a different side to you because for somebody who loves going out into the wilderness so much and seeing animals and stuff, you have to have an inherent patience because you, do. you know, the animals don't come to you. There's you know, they say there's nothing worse than working with you. Like, kids and animals right <laughs> yeah <laughs> because totally. they, they, they never do what you want them to do and <laughs> when true. they finally show up then you have to soak in that moment so you do have that patience you are a patient person I it's just so. um maybe it's just an ex, ex it, it exhibits itself in different ways for you you might be right because i do think that almost like having a hit song is a little bit like when you're going out and looking for animals like you never know you have to take your shot though you have to put yourself out there right you go into the ocean and you put yourself out there and you hope if you just keep doing it that one day you're gonna see you know whatever animal it is you're very lucky also there is luck involved but mm. it's kind of like that with putting out songs it's like you just keep putting them out and hopefully one of them really connects well i wish you all the best for this one and hope they all connect um Ooh, just to you. increase your audience and the ears that are out there but for now you've got the entire shark week audience here what do you have to say to them <laughs> Uh, thanks for letting a silly bop singer come on and talk to you guys about sharks. <laughs> it's like genuinely my brother was the one that like hooked us up and he was like shark week. And I remember screaming and I was like, please get me on shark week. Like it's such a passion of mine. I was such a fan. I truly, it comes from a really genuine place. So thanks for letting me be a part of this shark community i'm in hey, no i'm worries. in here with you guys yeah we'll have to get you out on the water get you on a shark week show in the Please. future so it's like honestly 12 years ago i tried to sell a tv show where i got to go out and um i don't know just talk about animal conservation but also have adventures yeah. and people at the time were like what you're the chick that brushes your teeth with whiskey and i'm like no 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 <laughs> i do that but i also love spending time with animals so that, I'll do that, but <laughs> <laughs> so that's like my true fantasy is doing Shark Week would be a dream. Do you think you'll ever do a shark song? I could probably figure that out. On my new album, I do have a song about wanting to be a house cat, which is my other favorite animal. <laughs> okay, well, but, maybe so... for Cat Week, but maybe that's the Shark Week <laughs> show we do. But here you go. Cash is going to compose a song in the field when we go out Perfect. and see what species. Name the species. Where are we going? For me, I mean, my favorite, my favorite is a hammerhead, but I also love like a leopard shark I saw recently and they're so beautiful. They are very cool. But hammerhead sounds more shark week. Okay, let's do hammerhead then. Let's, let's go to the Galapagos, see some hammerheads, and then I'll sing you a song right there on the boat. If you find me a hammerhead, I'll sing you a song about them. Deal. That sounds amazing. All right, we'll run that up the flagpole. Thank you so yeah. much, Cash. We really appreciate your time today. 
Thanks. All right, it's time for today's Shark Bite, where Sierra leaves us with a cool ocean fact to end the show. What have you got for us today, Sierra? All right, today I'm going to tell you about how whale sharks have a sharp eye. Okay, like eyesight? (laughs) Not quite. So, whale sharks actually have this pretty uncommon feature, and they have these tiny modified teeth called dermal denticles that cover their whole eyeball. Why would they have that? (laughs) So, since they don't have any eyelids, these eyeball teeth probably serve as a protective armor against the elements. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. When I used to work with whale sharks, you'd see them brushing up against stuff all the time because they're a filter feeder, so they're coming to the surface. You've got to imagine that they've got to be rubbing all over things. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And actually, each eyeball probably has more than 3,000 of these teeny tiny teeth. That's crazy. All right. For such a gentle giant, they're certainly well armored. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Sierra. I appreciate it. Anytime. Okay, that's it for today's podcast. I want to thank you all for listening and I hope you learned something. And Kesha, I want to thank you for your time and not only for your time, but for your activism. Using your voice to save sharks and to protect animals. I mean, I couldn't ask for more than that. Make sure you check out Kesha's new album. It's called Gag Order. It's absolutely amazing. And we'll catch you on the next Shark Week podcast. Thanks again, guys. Chat to you soon.